Thanks for joining today. My name is Jeff Demuth and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. I've been at AWS for about eight years on our geospatial team and based out of Austin, Texas. In the video today, we're going to walk through AWS Workspaces, which is a virtual desktop service on AWS. We'll set up a new workspace, uh, log into it, and then we'll install ArcGIS Pro on it. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in. From the AWS console, you can search for workspaces up top. I've got it here in my main page. Click on workspaces. Click create workspace. Now workspace is going to require um, Active Directory. So we'll click create a new directory. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a full-fledged Active Directory. For this, we're going to just use Simple AD, which is a Linux Samba Active Directory compatible server. Just create a small instance. We'll give it a name. Password. Select our subnets. And click create directory. And then this typically takes around 10 minutes or so for the, uh, the new directory to come online. So we'll see requested and now creating. And there we go, the directory is active. Let's go back here, refresh. We can now choose our directory have to register it first. Confirm. Choose our subnets. Alright, now we can choose this. Activate this user for the workspace. Next, we'll choose our workspace type. So most users can get by with just a standard instance. We'll choose um, our image, so server 20, uh, 2022 with the Windows 10 desktop experience. Sorry, sorry, I should say uh, most users can get by with like a regular instance, like a four core, 16 gig of memory machine. Your power users are probably going to want the GPU enabled machines. So we've got, uh, I recommend the G4DN. And then when you choose the G4DN, you want to make sure you use the PC over IP protocol as that's the only protocol that has graphics card support. Um, for this though, again, most of your 2D map editing users can get by with you know, something like a power instance of so four cores, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, anybody using 3D or you know, heavy geoprocessing tools will probably want to use the GPU enabled. And you can switch between different instances uh, pretty easily. So if you want to use a uh, power instance today and a GPU instance tomorrow. Uh, next we're going to configure this for auto stop. 
this says that after one hour of idle time, the instance will shut off. This is just for, for cost savings. Uh, sometimes with ArcGIS processing, you might want it to be always on if you've got geoprocessing tools to just keep running. Uh, you can select always on and you can change between auto stop and always on as well. And we'll view our configuration and click create. And then this will probably take another 10 minutes or so to come online. So our status is pending. And we can see now our status is available. And I just noticed I launched this with the WSP protocol, which is Workspaces Streaming Protocol. This isn't a graphics instance, so that's fine. Um, there's not a big difference between PC over IP and, and WSP. I, I tend to see a little bit more PC over IP. Some of uh, it's more of an industry standard, so there's some uh, what are they the like thick clients that that are out there. Some of them have native PC over IP support, so it's easy to plug AppStream or um, workspaces into those. Uh, but WSP is is fine as well. So the next thing we have to do is click on our workspace ID, and we're going to copy this registration code. And also you can see it's very easy to, to change this instance size. So I can say modify compute type. You know, maybe I need eight cores and 32 gig of RAM. I can click on that and it'll, it'll update the configuration. That'll probably take um, maybe 20 minutes or so to do that. And the instance that will look like a reboot. You can also do this from inside the workspace instance itself, which is really nice. I can modify the running mode. So I mentioned the always on, the auto stop. So maybe I've got a geoprocessing job I want to kick off. I can change that to always on and let that run. And then next we're going to register our, our instance with the client. Or actually also um, you'll get a link sent to the email address that you registered to change your username and password. So on the email, you click that link, and this will pop up, and you just put in your new password. And then it redirects you to different clients that we have available. One of my favorite things about workspaces is just how many clients are available. Um, very popular to run this on, um, you know, Android devices. I've got a workspace client on my phone. You can do a phone dock. Uh, also run it on the Fire tablet. It's really nice. You can access it through the web browser. And then the other one that's really awesome is is the Linux. Uh, client so you can connect to workspaces from from Linux so I've already downloaded uh, the client and installed it and so I've got uh, Amazon workspaces icon here you just click on that and then to register that instance you say change registration code and copy the registration code in now I can log in with that username and password.
and we're logged in. So now we can install ArcGIS Pro. So I went ahead and downloaded you know, just the ArcGIS Pro binaries and .NET. So we can install those now. And then we'll install ArcGIS Pro. Oh, looks like .NET's still installing. We'll give another minute. All right, let's try again. There we go. See, I've got my ArcGIS Pro icon. And there's the pop up to log in. Type my credentials in and we're in. And the first time this boots up, yeah, you know, it's got to create its cache and does a couple setup things. So that first boot will you know, maybe take a minute or two. So a few points I want to touch on, this comes up a lot, is you know, when to use AppStream, when to use workspaces. Um, with workspaces, if I go in here and I've got admin rights on mine and install you know, some of the other GIS tools that people work with, so SafeFME or um, you know, just other applications, those will those will stay on the instance when I log out and log back in. Those will all be there. Now, oh, also the settings. So here again, I can change my compute type just from inside the client, and that'll look like a reboot. And some of the other configuration options. Um, but with AppStream our other VDI service, if I save something to my desktop or I install an application and I log out and log back in, that's going to get completely destroyed. Um, those will have a network drive or a home folder where you'll save all your content to. And that we call that, you know, it's application streaming or non-persistent non desktop environment. The benefit of, of AppStream is when an administrator publishes a new image with the the, you know, the upgraded ArcGIS Pro, maybe there's a new version out and you've got a, a thousand users, all 1,000 users, when they log in, they'll automatically see that new ArcGIS Pro instance um, with workspaces because each user kind of has their own virtual desktop environment. Each user is going to have to go in and do that upgrade or you would automate it or script it. But um, that's really a big difference between AppStream and workspaces. The other thing is um, some of the benefits of, of using a virtual desktop on AWS is, I mean, kind of the, 
the simple one, so just access to the latest GPUs, NVIDIA's, um, AMD GPUs, access to the latest CPUs, access to the newest, fastest RAM. Um, but also ArcGIS is very sensitive to latency. So having your ArcGIS Pro running on AWS puts it right next to your ArcGIS Enterprise environment running on AWS. Also puts it right next to a lot of these large data sets that, that live on AWS, things like Sentinel imagery, Landsat, Nape imagery. You'll see significant performance improvements because you now have single digit latency, uh, large network connections, so like EC2 instances with 5 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig network cards um, that have direct access to, to download these, these large data sets. So that's really where you're going to see your biggest performance gain. Uh, low latency connections to your databases and uh, that's that's all I had for for this video I'm um, also this workspace and AppStream client do have multi monitor support so you can have this session span multiple monitor screens it's a super super useful feature <laughs> but yeah that's that's all I had for this video if um, you know if you like the video feel free to, to like it um, and subscribe to my channel hope you enjoyed it thanks